And we're just learning that eight L.A. police officers who mistakenly fired on two women during the manhunt for ex-cop Chris Dorner will be allowed to return to the field after they get additional training. That's all according to the L.A. police chief Charlie Beck, who had this to say about the decision. I have confidence in their abilities as LAPD officers to continue to do their jobs in the same capacity they had been assigned. In the end, we as an organization can learn from this incident and from the individuals involved. Now, this is all in reference to the mistaken shooting, which took place on February 7th of last year when officers were protecting a potential Dorner target. When one of the newspaper delivery women threw a paper onto the pavement in the early morning hours, an officer thought the sound was a gunshot and opened fire on her. Margie Carranza, 47, suffered minor injuries, and her 71-year-old mother, Emma Hernandez, was shot in the back. So was this the right call? Here to discuss this along with some other police-related cases making headlines, I'm joined by Pete Ayer at copblock.org. So Pete, uh, as far as we know, these two women went on to win a $4.2 million settlement from the city, which was well-deserved. Uh, but this uh, is what their attorney had to say about the LAPD's decision not to punish the officers. Uh, he said, if either of the women had been killed, you can bet your bottom dollar somebody would be fired and maybe prosecuted. A stroke of luck firing more than 100 rounds and missing should not mean the discipline is lighter. So... Is this what has to happen for officers to be charged? Someone has to be shot and killed versus just being shot and injured? Well, unfortunately, what we've seen all too often throughout the states is, you know, if a police employee engages even in an action that causes the death of an innocent person uh, or, or the death of someone unjustly, then even if they are charged, they're very frequently uh, found guilty. Um, you asked if, if this was the correct finding in this case, and I think for the police and, and, you know, their colleagues, they would say that, yes, it is the correct finding. The police spokesperson called these uh, eight involved talented and well-qualified. But obviously there's no deterrence in these sorts of actions uh, when there's no accountability had, when they're back out on the street and when the people forced to pay uh, the settlement are the taxpayers that they're supposed to be serving. Right. Now, the civilian police commission that found the officers had violated this policy to begin with also blamed the department, saying the officers weren't staffed properly, that the sergeant wasn't trained to oversee uh, such a protection detail, and that there was no operational plan in place. So should there be some kind of punishment for the department itself? I mean, ultimately, individuals are responsible for their actions. So I would say that the eight individuals that were responsible for firing these rounds that hit uh, at least seven other houses uh, are responsible themselves. And uh, whether the institution, the LAPD, should be, you know, in some way culpable, we have to step, I think it's important to step back and realize that that institution, just like all police departments, are founded on a double standard that say their actors have the right to steal from people they say they protect and able to protect them. They, they're, they're taking the taxpayer money from people in the area. So they're saying, it's okay for us to do something that you can't do. We can steal from you to protect you. Uh, so when you have an institution that's set up with these perverse incentives, it's, it's not surprising that you see outcomes like this. Right. Well, I do want to turn to another story regarding Miriam Carey. That's the woman who was killed after a car chase near the Capitol last year. Uh, we're learning that her family has filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the Secret Service and the U.S. Capitol Police. Uh, the lawsuit is for $75 million. You know, considering how the situation unfolded, um, I don't know if you remember uh, in detail what happened, but do you think that she has a strong case here? Well, unfortunately, what uh, police agents have done, the, uh, the court system here in the States, uh, it's a carryover from um, the English uh, court system for the large part, and then the feudal system there said uh, the king can, can cause no wrong. And so what that's translated to here in the States today is what's called qualified immunity for police employees. And unless courts rule that, yes, you can go ahead and, and sue these police employees, uh, then they're immune from being uh, sued in their uh, individual capacity. So uh, I don't think that we're going to see much in the way of accountability, even if this does move forward in the court system. And, and if it does, and there is a settlement reached, again, it's not going to be the trigger men uh, that are on the hook for it. It's going to be area taxpayers. Right. Well, let's move to a more recent case. Uh, a 28-year-old Florida man was shot to death 
after assaulting some people. Take a look at this uh, cell phone video of the incident. So he was naked and had apparently been biting people's faces, or that's, that's what's been said. Uh, they don't know if he was under the influence of any kind of drug, but they apparently tasered him and then afterwards shot him three times. I mean, do you think that police did all they could in this situation, or is there something else that could have been done, should have been done? What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I wish I could give you a, a more direct answer, not being there myself and not having all the details. Um, I can't. Uh, come down with any 100% accuracy, but what I do know is that some people in the area, uh, the brother and the father of uh, one of the people that had been pursued by that gentleman, did step up, did try to come to the aid and uh, deter that attack, and that's something I think we should emphasize more and more. Instead of uh, default being turned to the so-called authorities, we should look out for each other uh, in our communities, look out for ourselves, know that since we own ourselves, we have the responsibility to take care of ourselves and, and ideally to take care of our neighbors, hoping that they would do the same for us. So I know Florida is an open carry state. There's a lot of concealed carriers, which are good, but ultimately with the police employees involved, I would hope before any of them would ever use deadly force, they would think, what would I do if this person that I'm about to shoot at was a family member? What if they were my aunt? Would I try to talk them down? Would I try? Absolutely. There to needs to be some questioning as the first line of defense, for sure. But I want to get to the, the last question um, before we have to let you go, which is uh, looking at law enforcement and the justice system, because we're just learning that a Texas judge has again considered the senten sentencing for this 16 year old kid claiming affluenza. This is the teenager who killed four people while drunk driving. Um, he'll be sentenced to 10 years probation. Uh, considering what we've seen with harsher sentences for lesser crimes, are, I mean, are you surprised by this sentencing? Not at all. I mean, um, the, it really just underscores the fact that the criminal justice system isn't built to uh, protect people, it's built to uh, protect the legitimacy of, the, of those active in the criminal justice system and people with money. And we've seen it, uh, their apparatus being used against uh, people who question their legitimacy and against uh, historically against minorities and people uh, that they want to keep oppressed. So the fact that they might be more favorable to people with money isn't surprising. All right. Well, Pete Ayer, copblock.org, thanks for all your insight. Appreciate it.